This web clip summarizes an overview of consciousness and complexity measured in normal physiological, pharmacological and pathological conditions. My name is Olivia Gosswiz and I am a postdoctoral researcher in Purcell Laboratory of Bradley Purcell and Center of Sleep and Consciousness of Giulio Tononi in the Department of Psychology and Psychiatry at the University of Wisconsin in Madison, USA. The work presented here has been done in collaboration with the Coma Science Group Cyclotron Research Center directed by Stephen Lawes at the University of Liège in Belgium, Marcello Massimini Laboratory in the University of Milan in Italy, and Giulio Stononi Laboratory at the University of Wisconsin in the United States. Before going into this, we would like to thank Adenauer Casali for creating the video that explains the study of a theoretically based index of consciousness that is independent on sensory and motor processing. A combination of transcranial magnetic stimulation, TMS, and electroencephalography, EEG, here are 60 electrodes, is used in order to perturb directly the cerebral cortex and to record the immediate brain response to this perturbation. We therefore use TMS as an input and EEG as an output which allows us to evaluate effective connectivity. Effective connectivity is the causal interaction between distant brain area. In this way, it's possible to bypass sensory inputs and motor outputs, with the advantage of not requiring active participation of subjects nor language comprehension. According to the Integrated Information Theory of Giulio Tononi, Consciousness is related to a system capacity for information integration. In the case of a brain, consciousness supporting network should present an optimal balance between functional integration and differentiation. That is, when we stimulate a part of the brain, it reacts locally but also at distant site. So the electrical response is widespread and differentiated according to the location in the brain, as you can see here. Then, the brain electrical response to the perturbation is compressed, zip, in order to calculate its complexity. That is what we call the perturbational complexity index, PCI. PCI is defined as the normalized Lempel-Ziff algorithm complexity of the spatiotemporal pattern of significant cortical activation measured by EEG and triggered by TMS. A complex system that is made of highly interacting elements that have different properties and different connections reacts to the perturbation with a response that is widespread and differentiated, as you can see here. This response contains a lot of information and cannot be zipped much, resulting in a high value of perturbational complexity index, PCI, here 0 0.51. During unconsciousness, two phenomena can occur, a loss of integration and a loss of information. In the first case, a modular system that lacks integration between its elements will react with a local response. Here, the brain will still react to the stimulation, as you see, but it stays local, and it doesn't spread all over the brain. Moreover, it does not last long. This response is easier to zip, and when compressed, it will give a low value of complexity. Here, the PCI will be 0 0.23. In the second case, when there's a loss of differentiation, the system is integrated, but it is homogeneous. That is, the response is widespread, but stereotypical. And it contains redundant information.
In this case, the response will react with a pattern that is easy to zip and give again a complexity index of low value. In this case, 0.21. So PCI varies between 0 and 1. And as you will see here, we have performed this measure of complexity in both unconsciousness and consciousness in healthy subjects. When subjects are deeply asleep, or where, when they are going, undergoing general anesthesia using propofol, xenon, or midazolam, the PCI is low, between 0.1 and 0.31. But when the subjects are awake and aware, then the PCI is high, between 0.45 and 0.7. We have then done the same in patients with severe brain injuries. Patients in vegetative states who are awake but unconscious show low PCI value, which correspond to the low value measured during deep sleep and anesthesia. Patients in minimally conscious state who recover some sign of consciousness show intermediate PCI value. And patients who have emerged from MCS and recover con functional communication, here exit MCS, show even higher PCI value, similar to what is observed in locked in syndrome patients who are conscious but fully paralyzed except for eye movement. And this is true wherever we stimulate in the brain, as you can see here the different TMS target on the bottom left. In conclusion, PCI gauges the conjoint presence of integration and information, a theoretical, a theoretical requirement for consciousness. And experimentally, PCI allows detecting the level of consciousness at the single level subject in many physiological, pharmacological, and pathological conditions. Now let's see in more details what happens in a patient who recovers from coma. This graph represents the clinical evolution as assessed with the coma recovery scale revised, CRSR. The higher the score, the higher the level of consciousness. 35 days after the brain injury, when the patient was in a vegetative state or an unresponsive wakefulness syndrome, TMS triggered a simple slow wave response in the brain that stayed local near the site of stimulation here represented with the white cross, and each color represents an area of the brain. This first result indicates a breakdown of affective connectivity, similar to the one previously observed in unconscious sleeping or anesthetized subjects. In contrast, on day 45 and 47, the patient was diagnosed in minimally conscious states, and even if on the day of the experiment, day 46, the patient did not show any conscious behavior, TMS still triggered complex and widespread responses in the brain. You see that each part of the brain reacts differently and that the EEG response is different as compared to when the patient was in a vegetative state. And finally, when the patient recovered the ability to communicate on day 54, TMS triggered again responses that were differentiated and widespread in the brain. In conclusion, patients who gradually gradually recover consciousness revealed a clear-cut change in affective connectivity that occur at an early stage even before reliable communication is established at the bedside. All in all, these studies show that for the first time we are able to measure the level of consciousness at the individual level. Thank you for your attention.